You must be over. Right, let's take a look at what feels like the only story in town at the moment, which is, of course, the Women's World Cup. And to do that, we've got ITV Sports presenter Laura Woods joining us alongside um, Marvin and Cole and... Nick Ferrari, we're so lucky to have you all here. <laughs> it's right old party yeah. this morning, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. And it, there is a cause for celebration, isn't there? Yeah, oh, it's yeah, a massive cause. Yeah. By the way, Chris, you could have just kept Chris. Like, he is a better sports <laughs> person than any of us could possibly be, by the way. He was amazing. He is great, like, isn't he? That's all my notes done. Yeah, exactly. There we go. <laughs> I mean, what's it, we sit here and we can talk about it. It's your job. That's what you do. You talk about sport and football. Where did you watch it, number one? And did it go exactly how you thought it would? Oh, I watched it at home on my own, which is a little bit of an anticlimax when you're like, you want someone to celebrate yeah. it with. Um, it did kind of go a little bit like I thought it would because Sam Kerr, who is just amazing, we know mm. how brilliant Sam is, and we know that she's actually... Or before the competition started, Australia were the only team that had beaten England in 38 games or 36, or however many it was before the tournament. So we knew how dangerous Sam Kerr was. So when she scored that goal, I was like, oh, no. I was like, I feel like it's going to go badly. But then England are finding ways, and they have done that the whole tournament. They found different ways to deal with injuries, with suspensions. They've changed their formation. Serena Vigman is incredible. So, oh. yeah. <laughs> are you a bit nervous though, like yeah. me? I do feel a little. How bit was nervous it for you, Marvin? Yeah, I was at home alone as Where well, are you? busy having we my have little brunch. I know, right? We should have been on the phone. <laughs> Um, my heart was in my mouth and, you know, I was actually texting my husband upstairs. He was working from home and he was like, yay, but couldn't <laughs> move because he was busy on a meeting. But it was absolutely incredible. What When you said the word Serena Wiegmann, yeah. she has really made the team batten down the hatches in terms of the defences. They were so strong. Mm. It's the performance of their life. It's a performance, actually, that, that transcended last year's Euros, I think. Um, and I'm really, really hopeful that Sunday is going to be a clean sweep. But I'm not going to make any predictions because I've done that before and I've failed miserably. So, zip. It's embarrassing, isn't it, when you get it wrong? <laughs> so, I, I suppose we had two Billy No Mates here watching it by themselves. Yeah, thank you. Nick, <laughs> what, who were you watching it with, Nick? OK, so I was at home. I wasn't quite alone in that when the final whistle blew, the only other person anywhere near was my gardener, so I rung, ran out and hugged him in the herbaceous border. He'd never been... <laughs> He'd never been hugged before. He often doesn't get a cup of tea, but I had to have a physical manifestation. So I ended up hugging him and we just had this little dance of joy. It was fantastic. They played their hearts out. Don't have any ifs. We know there will be a triumph on Sunday. It's written in the stars. Bring on the Spanish. I think everybody watching is feeling a little bit sorry for your gardener right now, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> He's never been hugged before. Yeah. Also, why, have we, why have we all not got any friends? That's what I'm being worried about. <laughs> there we go. Um, um, Nick, do you feel... I mean, it really has captured the nation this time round and we should never belittle it at all. It is a World Cup. It, listen... It is only the second time an England football team has progressed to the World Cup. We've waited nearly three decades for this. It's interesting you say it's captured the nation. I think it has. But I have to say, I don't know about where you live, but there doesn't seem to be the same number of flags in cars or in taxis or even the same amount of merchandise. I'm a, I'm a little disappointed there. And I'm going to have to say, and my listeners shared this this morning, I do feel that either Prince William, who, of course, chairs the FA, or the Prime Minister, I think either one, or preferably both, should be going down to Australia because, let's be candid, and I'd be interested in your, your panel here, if it was the blokes, I reckon you'd definitely have Prince William and or the PM going. And I think that's a bit of a disappointment. What do you think? I have to agree, and it's really interesting that you pick up on that. So when I go in to do these games, it's really, really early, so we're getting in at sometimes 4 o'clock in the morning, and uh, our taxi drivers are picking us up. And what I've loved throughout this tournament is a lot of the taxi drivers are men and they are loving the games yeah. and they're really getting into it. And even some of them say, I haven't been following it that much. And then they'll get into a really like staunch debate with yeah. you about something. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you are really enjoying it. But they said the same thing. It, newspapers would have like St George's flags and things like that that you could take out on wall charts. It hasn't been that accessible for this tournament. And I thought we might have learned a little bit of mm -hmm. something from the Euros yeah. about how popular women's football is. The numbers are absolutely flying. You have to take notice of it. Marv, what does it feel like to see the development of women's football? I, I mean, I, I'm not into football, but even this has made me yeah. into football. What does it feel like to yeah. see it, how well it's done? Absolutely magnificent, because we've, we all always rally around England men. Seeing what the women have achieved in the Euros and seeing them here is magnificent. For me, it's a, a big boost, because I think of my little great-niece, Luna, who's going to be seven in a couple of months. And she's so active into all sorts of sports and swimming. And I can see her now watching the girls and going, this could be me. 
football is yeah. viable, whereas when, you know, when I was a little girl, a long time ago, many decades ago, <laughs> when I was seven, eight years old, it was not an option. It was not something that was encouraged, that was allowed, where there was a route. So this is really going to pave the way for a whole system to grow and for, yeah. for more brilliant lionesses, more Alicia Russo's, yeah. more Lauren James's, more Sam Kerr's. Come on. I thought the same, actually, with my little niece. She, I said to her, what do you want to be? And she's like, only seven, she had a footballer. Mm. And to see a little girl come out with that it's now, amazing. it's, it's just great. amazing. Laura, beautiful. you're the expert around this table. <laughs> Have England had an easy ride to get to where they are? Can they beat Spain? I don't think they've had an easier ride. And I think we, when you look at the results so far at this World Cup, everybody you think is going to do really well hasn't. The favourites have fallen. Some of the uh, teams that have come through and then made their debuts in the competition have been really, really strong. So I think it's hard to predict it. They can beat Spain. I think potentially it might go to penalties. Uh, and as difficult as that would be to watch, Spain are a very good side and they've got players in that team. Alexei Putellas is the best player in the world. And they've got a lot of Barcelona players and they have a really good structure over there for women's football. They're very advanced. But this England side, as I said earlier on, they've come through so many different trials and tribulations and we haven't seen the best of them yet, I don't think. I don't, at this tournament, we haven't seen the best of them yet. They haven't played in the way that we know they can. Um, but they've changed the way and they haven't had a set team the whole way through either. Yeah. So whether or not she changes it, whether or not Lauren James gets a start, because obviously she's back from suspension mm. now, I don't know. But on the topic of, of little ones watching, I'm exactly the same. I've got nieces and nephews. What I really love is it's not just the little girls. The boys are interested yeah. in it too. And I think sometimes that's how you make a generational change. Everyone just really wants to be involved. It's football at the end of the day. And if you put it on and watch it and you enjoy sport, you're going to enjoy this. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We need to talk about predictions then. Oh, don't we don't. need to talk about <laughs> predictions. I can't go away with it. Like pressure. How come you're allowed to <laughs> say I don't do predictions <laughs> and then like hey, you want Mark? Because I've been disastrous, Laura. That's the thing. I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> I do. I do think. I think it could be high scoring. Unless it's a cagey game and in finals sometimes it's not yeah. a great performance, mm. is it? Because both teams are a little bit cagey, but they both know how to score a lot of goals, these yeah. two teams. Mm. That's why I almost think, well, maybe it will go to extra time, maybe it will go to penalties. And if it does go to penalties, this England side know how to win a penalty shootout. So yes, yeah. I think exactly. they can do it. I, think I agree. They've got the nerve. What I think Serena has instilled in them is an incredible re resilience and a real team focus, because there was one key thing um, that one of the players said about um, the reaction to Lauren James. It was saying, you know, we, we are sorry that's happened, but the team does not rely on one player. Yeah. We are an entire team and we're going to work this out and we're all going to work through it together. So I think that resilience is going to work in England's favour, whereas Spain has had some issues in the camp. There's a little bit of dissension in the ranks. That might destabilise them. Let's, let's hope it does so that we, can, exactly. we have that edge. Lovely. Lovely. Marverine, Nick, stay with us. Laura, lovely to see you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much Thanks indeed. For and don't forget that you can, of course, watch full coverage on ITV1 and ITVX Sunday morning at 9.25 in the morning. Right after the break, sad news that Sir Michael Parkinson has died at the age of 88. We'll be reflecting on that right after this break. <laughs> 